the more you replenish yourself with the goodness and love to yourself, from yourself, the more you'll see it manifest in every other part of your life. Our guest today is international fitness superstar, Shanti. Shanti is a best-selling author, fitness motivator, and icon in the domain of health and wellness. He's been featured on The Dr. Oz Show, Oprah, and many other major media platforms. He's created some of the most popular fitness programs known to man, including Insanity and T25. And today, Sean is on the show to help us to remember how powerful we are when we are faced with adversity and also when we might be experiencing negativity, whether it's in a family construct or a social construct, and how can we push through and continue to be us, to be authentic to who we are and what we believe. And it's needed now more than ever. So let's jump into this conversation with the incredible Sean T. Yeah. Sean T, my family, my name twin, my, 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 my absolute, my brother, so good to see you, man. It's good to see you too. The the last time we did a podcast, well, you did a you were on my podcast, but the last time we were in studio was the first time I did your podcast a few years ago. My book came out, and I have to say that was one of the greatest experiences being interviewed by you because you really let people express them true selves, and you you know you listen. You're a great listener. You really connect to what it is that they need to share. So I'm very excited to be back on your show. Oh man, it's totally our pleasure. We, I'm just gonna be real, man. We need you right now. Uh, we could use some Shanti infusion in our lives. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I've been in this industry, this fitness thing for 20 plus years. I, I think it's like 23 years now, almost 24. And right now, but how's that if you only twenty three yourself? I mean, you know, I'm <laughs> you know, what I mean, but um, thank you, thank you. I take that as a compliment. Nah, I think that after being in this industry for twenty plus years, and right now, what we are going through in the entire world, fitness and health is the most important, and still, like I believe. For so long, I do believe that people focus too much on the external physique. And I know, I'm going to be very real, I know I'm one of those people that used to have the infomercials on, like, such and such, lost 35 pounds in 60 days, and blah, blah, blah. But the core of who I am is less about what you look like and more about how healthy you are and how your body's functioning. And I've gotten really, really deep into just mental fitness because I believe that there's nothing that's going to make you really confident unless you are committed to yourself, committed to your journey. You know, I have this hat on that says, this is my journey. So you have to be committed to that before you can get into any six pack abs. Yeah, man. That's what one of the places where we connected, you know, I saw it was so, so, so much deeper with you, but that's really how you've connected and impacted the lives of so many people is because even on the, the the surface of fitness and you know and and dance, there's a there's so much heart, there's so much depth and real just kind of focus on like you just said that it inner fitness, and you know right now like I said I think we can all re use a reminder about that. Many people have had their entire worlds turned upside down. And even folks who were like dedicated to their fit fitness, you know, with gyms closed nationwide and folks figuring out how to pivot with their kids being in the house or just not being able to have community access. Uh, I know a lot of folks have struggled, you know, trying to get back on track. So I would love to get your perspective uh, because I think a lot of folks also, even unconsciously, are just like when things get back to normal, when things get back to normal and just keep putting themselves off. And I just love to know your perspective on what do you think folks can kind of look to, maybe look into that inner fitness. Talk to us. You know what I did this year once the pandemic happened is I actually rewound 12 years. So, or actually 14 years. So in 2006, 
is when I first got my first contract with Beachbody. And once I got my first contract with Beachbody, the first thing I was thrown into was teaching test groups and doing test groups, which is a group of people, about 50 people that come in and they test the workout program. And we put them on workout and we put them on a food plan and they show up every day. And I was teaching two classes a day, morning and night. And every day when they came in or once a week, they would get on a scale and you would track their progress and you would say, oh, you, you know, you lost this amount of weight and you gained this amount of weight. And are you sticking to your food? And we did that program in and program out. And while I know that getting on the scale and weight loss was something that really helped people continue on and be confident and feel motivated about what it is that they're doing. I also saw that it was something that was the worst thing that could happen to people. Getting on the scale, showing up, and the first thing that they do is wanting to see how much of themselves that they lost. And believe it or not, I got into that. I would get up, I would have a scale right by my toilet, I would walk in, and I'm, how much of myself did I lose today? And so I, at that point, that's when I started, when I realized that and I realized what it was doing to people, that's when I started focusing more on the mindset. And after every single test group class that I taught in the past 14 years, would finish with motivation of how to succeed and look within so that the driving force wasn't the scale and the driving force was the trust and belief that you have in yourself to want to continue to succeed. Because I can tell you, when I did my hip hop abs program, I was 188 pounds. I was 28 years old or so. I had this six pack. I could truly eat whatever I wanted. But you know what? That wasn't the thing that pushed me that wasn't the thing that people saw on the screen. They saw someone that believed in themselves and the reason the, saw someone that believed in them. And the reason that, why I was able to express my belief into people through a screen is because I stopped letting the scale define me and I started letting my mental fitness become way stronger than my physical fitness. So I wanted to take you back there for a little bit because being a fitness guru, which I really don't even like that name, but being a person who's known for fitness, it really, people think I'm all about the body and I'm not. And so one of the things that I did coming back to 2020, one of the things that I did during the pandemic is I pivoted my entire business to online, not just my online workouts. I created a group called Dig Deeper Nation and now has about 50,000 people in there. And not only do we work out, but I give them, I developed a course called the Mental Dig that's like very simple. Every single day they would get a mental fitness challenge. Every single day they, we were communicating on how they're, con they're continuing to push forward that has nothing to do with physical. And even times when, because people like their before and after photos, I'm like, if you give me a progress photo, it better come with a story on how you are going to take this this confidence that you've built or whatever it is that you've done in terms of your physical success, it has to come with something where you have started to believe in yourself just a little bit more. Um, I know that was a lot, but I wanted to take people back because me too. I mean, I started it in a space where it was like, oh, we're going to lose weight and we're going to celebrate all these pounds lost. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Because Two months after I saw somebody go through one of my test groups, guess what? They gained the weight back and they were actually, if you want to keep it very real, they're afraid to leave the test group because they're leaving something where you're holding their hand and they don't know how to hold their own hand. And you're not going to be successful in fitness until you're able to hold your own hand. Yes, community is important and accountability, but at the end of the day, you have to do the push-ups, you have to do the jumping jacks, you have to decide, you have to put the food in your mouth, you have to have the, the, the willpower to drive past 
the gas station and not jump in there and grab a bag of chips and a, and a pastry that's easy to eat, right? Like you have to be able to believe in yourself that you can do this. And so, you know, I just love creating now these online communities where you have the support, but I always say it is 100% up to you how you want to succeed and move forward. Yeah, man, that's so good. So good. And again, this is why I love talking with you is keeping it beyond 100 and for myself included, same thing, you know, I'm a person, I enjoyed going to a gym, you know, having that gym environment, but I just so happened over the years, like I pick up a little piece of something here, a little piece of equipment, a little, little kettlebell, little, you know, this and that. And so we accumulated some stuff to be able to pivot, but just the routine was thrown off, you know, and my wife, same thing. She would get up every day, take my son to school and then go to the gym. And so her, that, that pattern has been thrown off. You know, it's not that we just like said, forget it and we're not doing anything, but de definitely that consistency ha has been challenging. And I think also, if you could speak to this of understanding when, when pressure's on or stuff's going on in our lives, to have a little bit more compassion for ourselves, you know, maybe have some grace, maybe start to think about things differently. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, you have to be nice to yourself. I was just talking on my podcast. I did a full podcast episode on how I have subconsciously been. I'm trying to say this in the best way. I have subconsciously been worried about what people think of me in terms of the way that I look. Because, you know, I'm me. I'm going to walk out the door. I'm going to be me, my personality. But I realized that for so long, I realized that people were so worried about what I looked like that I was subconsciously trying to please what people think I should look like when I think I look damn fine myself, right? And I think that's to my point or to your point and to your question, you, you have to wake up every single day knowing what power you possess. What is your superpower? Like I talk about in my book, what are the things that you do really great every single day? It has nothing to do with fitness. Just what do you do great every single day? What do you provide to this world, to your family, to your kids, to your job? Maybe you're just a nice person that holds the door for somebody when you do go to the grocery store, whatever. What are the things that you do every single day that really helps you believe that who you are is your true self. And I don't think a lot of people really are give themselves enough energy and enough, enough of a pat on the back to not worry about how do I look to other people and focus more on how do I feel about myself? What are the things that I'm doing every single day that are that I feel really good about for me? Because chances are, if you feel really good about the things that you're doing for yourself and you're really focused and you're really dedicated to yourself and doing the best that you can do, chances are everyone else is going to believe that. So if you're somebody out there who has just kind of like either fallen to the wayside on your fitness journey or fallen to the wayside on your belief, you have to hit the reset button and be like, well, what is great about me? What What is great about me? And a lot of people may look at that as being vain, right? Like I can be like, I'm really funny. I can dance. You know, I say I'm a really good friend. I care about people. You know, I can say, I can say all these great things about me and people be like, oh my God, that person's vain. I'm like, no, this is the space that I love being in. And we don't give ourselves enough credit on a daily basis to live in that space. If you live in that space and if you connect to that, you take that stuff to your workout. You take that stuff to your commitment to your nutrition. You take that stuff to your commitment to your relationship. So for people out there who, who may have been like falling off the wagon, if you will, it's not just the fitness that you're, I mean, that's not really it. It's probably, it probably has a lot to do with what you're giving yourself and how you're filling your own cup and the belief that you're bringing back into your own life. And the minute you start replenishing yourself with the goodness and love from you, I, this is a promise. And I don't like making promises, but the more you replenish yourself with the goodness and love to yourself, from yourself, the more you'll see it manifest in every other part of your life. This, listen, I didn't know this was going to go 
to this, this is so powerful, man. Already it's got my wheels turning differently. And I didn't know he was going to direct people to really acknowledging themselves and looking at their strengths. And thank you so much for bringing this up because I think this is, I know it, this has been an issue in our society for a long time. You know, there's this extreme of being concerned because we're from a young age really pressed into suppressing our greatness and told we don't want to be arrogant. You don't want to be cocky. You don't want to be, you know, whatever it is, these negative names. But confidence is not something that we talk about. And even in our, again, in our culture, when you start to express some of that confidence and you start to acknowledge who you are, that can be, you know, uh, twisted into a different type of, uh, of perspective. And now, so with that said, obviously there is a degree of like, you know, I'm better than, mm -hmm. right? And we're not talking about that. We're talking about acknowledging your greatness. And I think that this, a good place for people to like tap into this is to, to have this distinction that, you know, like this body and this mind, this is just, that's not all who you are. You know, you have a body, you have a mind, and this presence, this kind of internal, eternal presence that's like seeing through these eyes, that's experiencing life, that even when the mind is thinking and having the negative thoughts or the positive thoughts, it's that, that presence that's witnessing all of it. Mm. And for that presence to be able to see like, I really like Sean. I really like who this person is. I love these particular qualities. I know that Sean struggles with these things. And that's okay, but you can start to create like a distinction, you know, and, and to you, this, this word has been popularized, the ego, mm. and to understand, to, to use the ego and not have it use you, not believe that that's all who you are, because ego is not necessarily even a bad thing, it's given a bad connotation. Your ego is like your expression of who you are, this person that's coming out, right? So... Man, this is so good. Thank you for bringing this up. Yeah, I mean, I have so much to say about this. We were actually, I was just having a conversation with Scott, my husband, for those of you who don't know, and we were talking about ego and he heard a podcast where people say, you know, you have to, you have to get rid of your ego. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't believe that. I believe that it should be put in a cage in some instances, you know, but we all have one how are you able to tame your ego and how are you able to use it to fuel other people? How are you able to use it yeah. to fuel your own greatness? Because I think we wake up every day and the first thing we do when we go to the mirror is say, I don't like this about myself. We look in the mirror to try to change what we don't like. So you're already giving more energy to the things you don't like about yourself. But when someone wants to praise themselves, when someone wants to acknowledge their greatness, it is looked at in a, in a bad way. But when someone says like, oh, you know, I don't feel like I'm at my, my goal weight or I, my hair is ugly today. You know, I'm like, we, we all go through helping. No, you look great. Because the flip side of that is when you there are people out there who complain about that, the fact that they don't look great so that they can get the compliments from people, where people tell them, oh, right. no, yes, you do. So where's the balance? And the balance is, all right, this is what I'm great at. You should be able to admit it. This is where I struggle with. And to be quite honest, if you look at the things that you're great at, most of the time, it came, you developed that strength because of something you weren't great at. For instance, hmm. for me, the reason why I'm really, really confident now, Sean, is because when I was younger, I'm, I'm gay. I'm as gay as they come, right? Like, I know that might sound funny to some people, but not, not allowed to be myself for 21 years for, you know, to have to hide who I was, you know, and everybody's in the closet about something, which I've said before. It's like, okay, I'm, I already know there are going to be people who don't like me or judge me because of who I truly am. So what am I going to do? Am I going to sit in that and be like, I'm just going to focus on the people that don't like me? I'm like, no, like I've actually built a lot of confidence from understanding that people don't like me for who I truly am to now where I can say, I'm sick of living in a space of trying to hide who I am. I have to go to the other side of that so that I can thrive in my own life. Listen, 
I'm cool if you judge me for what you don't understand. What I'm not cool with is you trying to change me from who I really am. And so, you know, there, there's been a lot of struggles in my life. You know, earlier, being a parent of three-year-old twins, are you kidding me? Like, you know how many F-ups we had in the last three years? But I can honestly say that I, I'm trying to get better as a parent, and, and it takes a lot of patience. So I say all that to say is it's so easy for us to focus on the bad. If you take this year, you know, we're in 2020 now, if you take this year and the only thing you focus on is these negative things that are happening in your life, you're going to carry that and that's going to be your fuel. That doesn't need to be your fuel. It has happened. You can acknowledge it. But I can promise you, if you're walking and living and breathing today, there's something great that has happened and you have to attach to that thing. That's 1000, 1000 percent. And I, I don't know if you know this. But your confidence in who you are has, I know for certain, helped to bring about a level of acceptance that heretofore didn't exist. Unfortunately, mm. you know, a level of acceptance of people's choices and who they love, you know, which is the craziest thing we have to say this because there's this word tolerance. Mm. I don't like that. I don't want, don't tolerate me. Accept me, acknowledge me, respect me. And because of your confidence, you've created so much acceptance, which should have been there in the first place. Do you, do you realize how much you've created for people who have, you know, some kind of like apprehension, you know, like there's something wrong, which is, again, it's crazy to say that. But for so many people, man, like I know people super, you know, super thugged out guys, They're, they love Shanti, they love you. <laughs> You know, they like, they, 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 you know what I'm saying? They take a bullet for you, you know? They, they love you. You've broken down so many walls by you being authentic to who you are. I think that I also, thank you. I want to first say thank you. And I didn't know that maybe five, seven years ago, but I do know that now. And I'm, all, and I'm still surprised by it. Uh, and I've, I remember when it first started to happen where I saw people or encounter people who I was like, they definitely don't want to hang around me because, you know, obviously I'm a gay guy, whatever. And and then I saw the shift happen and I would say to Scott, I'm like, yo, can you believe like such and such thinks I'm cool? And he was like, it's your confidence. He's like, it's just that you're confident. But I also, again, want to be very clear. This isn't confidence from like, oh, my gosh, I'm great. This is confidence from being sick of not being confident. Yeah. You know, if you when you go the first 21 years of your life you know, not feeling really great and hiding who you are. Think about this for people who are listening right now. Think about the time where you woke up in the morning and you had to go throughout your entire day, be it a month, two months, where you had to hide what was happening in your life. There are a lot of people out there who are doing that right now. They're married and they're putting on the front and they they may be getting a divorce, but they're putting on the front because they have to appease to an audience or appease to what people think they want them to be, right? Think about how that makes you feel. And I'm not saying it's easy because it is a step-by-step -step process to get to the point of feeling confident about expressing who you are. But think about how that makes you feel. And then think of what it would feel like on the other side. I've said this before, like that movie, there's a thin line between love and hate. There's a thin line between being not being confident and being really confident. And everyone has a moment in which they break that barrier of, well, I just can't do this anymore. I was 14 years old. I was at a high school basketball game in front of all of my friends in a gymnasium that was, you know, it's a high school basketball game where I'm from. It was basketball. You know, everybody's hype. It's a very masculine athletic sport. And a friend of my mom's, turned around during a very silent time in a basketball game and be like, Sean, you, you know you're, f you're, su you're such a gay. This is in the middle of the basketball game, mm -hmm. right? You want to know what I said, Sean? I was like, f you, in front of like, I was 14 years old and I'm like, listen, some people can be like, oh my God, like that's really disrespectful. And that was the first time at which I was like, I'm being bullied by an older person and I'm not, I was like, 
listen, my mom was there. My mom was right there. And I'm like, I could probably get in trouble for cursing at this woman, for cursing this woman out. But that was the first time where I was like, I have to take up for myself. And I want people out there, you have to take up for yourself. And there's going to come a breaking point. So anyway, that's the thin line between love and hate for myself. That was the moment where I was like, even though I was 14 and it was seven years later that I eventually was really confident to be who I am. That was the point where I was like, if I cower down to this and, and literally sit in this gymnasium and be embarrassed and walk through the hallways and not have taken up for myself, I'm going to feel worse. And so it's what I did. And some people like say, oh my God, it's like disrespectful. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. There's like, you got to respect me. And that was the point in which in my life where I said, it was less about that person disrespecting me. I was like, well, you know, I have to like myself in order to thrive forward. And so, you know, I don't want to make this about like a, a sexuality issue, but for me, that's what it was. And ev- like I said, everyone goes through something where they have to hide it because they're afraid of what people are going to think about them. If they like this thing or they think this way or they want to change their job or whatever it is that they want. And there's a thin line. And so you have to decide, you know, how hard can you go? How far do you want to push into the negative space? And when do you want to switch over to start making strides to be in that positive, confident space? Man, come on. Come on. First of all, shout out the thin line between love and help, uh, love and hate. Martin Lawrence, hey. Bobby Brown, of all people. <laughs> all right, classic. I should know but you truly, knew. I should man, know you knew. Of course. Like, I got the, the theme songs in my head right now. H-Town. Oh, yeah. So, listen, man. I, I wrote this down when, when you were speaking. Strength typically is built through resistance. Right? Strength is typically built through resistance. So, those things that we're our strengths, the things that we should be able to express our confidence in because your your confidence was expressed and developed through resistance you know so right now and i'm so grateful that you're bringing this up i didn't know that this would be the direction is for us to acknowledge our strengths we need our strengths right now more than ever whatever that might look like whether you like you said if you if, if it's your compassion or or uh um acknowledgement of other people you know like you said you're at the grocery store and just showing extending a little bit of extra love and people who are so like withdrawn from each other uh whether it's you know just the ability to uh problem solve right now or the ability to uh um, even just deal with a lot of stuff maybe you're somebody like you can keep a lot of tabs open on your mental movie screen you know, your mental computer screen and you can just manage a lot and, and people need that when they just feel overwhelmed. Yeah. You know, there's so many different strengths that we all have and that we carry. And so being able to acknowledge our strengths and to walk in that confidence right now is going to help you. I, I believe that that strength increases all your other strengths, right? It, that strength increases all, it helps to lift up the weak spots. If you, if you know what I mean. I do. I mean, adversity is fuel, right? If you think about something so simple, if you look at the news, what is the thing that gets people talking? The negative, like only the bad stuff. Things that empower people, like here's something very empowering that you can do to really get through 2020. If the news is all that, nobody be talking. Mm, come on. Right? They, nobody say, I understand we gotta, I understand we gotta know what's going on, but they don't have the, you know, I've actually pitched myself to be on a specific specific show to be like, okay, let's have the powerful moment at the end of the show so that people can, th- no, when people watch uh, TV, reality TV, the highest rating shows, when you see that there's a fight on Bravo on one of the shows, it's like, oh girl, did you watch that? You know what I mean? Like, what are the, th- these are the things that are getting the most energy, the most fuel social media you know sean you've been through it when you post something like people want to take what you say and they want to they want to create the adversity because they want the com they want that fire you know they want it but what people are not doing is within their own adversity with their own struggle within their own you know challenging times they don't want to work as hard to push themselves forward as much as they want to work hard to to dig into the other adversity and to dig into the fighting and stuff that's going out in the world. And so what I like to say is, 
and we've all been guilty of it. We've all probably commented on something that we didn't want to. And we're like, oh my gosh, like this is negative. I don't want to get involved in it. But then you're like, oh, you know, that rage wins. But imagine if you took that same energy to yourself when you're going through your own struggle. And you say, instead of me giving it to people on social media, instead of me entertaining this negative stuff that's happening on the news, what if I'm able to change myself? What if I'm able to help enhance myself? And so that's how you get to a point where you can love yourself. And just kind of really quick going back to just the fitness thing in general, the people who really love themselves more and and really commit to themselves and are very present and aware of where they are in their life, that's what health really is. Yes, we, we have to eat healthy and of course you have to work out, but that's when I get back to the mental state. Because you have to be aware, you have to be present, and you have to be willing to do the work to constantly lift you forward. Yeah, listen, you know, right now we're in a place where there is uh, an, an intensified focus on negativity. And it's just like it, we're inundated with it. It's everywhere that you go. Uh, you know, if you look on social media, unless you're very strictly curating your feed, uh, if you're turning on the news at any point, there is no good news. Mm. There is no good news. As if nothing good is happening in the world. As if people are not recovering from tremendous uh, adversity. As, as if people are not still loving each other and supporting each other. There's a different reality than what we're being pitched. And it that is the bigger reality. And so with that said, man, obviously, and you mentioned this before the break. Uh, I've even seen this stuff, you know. And like for me, I've been in this feel for you know about 20 years as well and even since working online and doing so i've I've never never had people talk cra crazy to me like it's just i don't know if it's my demeanor or whatever i've just never seen it until now you know and what i'll do you know share very prestigious peer-reviewed you know randomized controlled trial and just like hey guys this is actually the other side of the story you're not hearing about and then, you know, but 90% of folks, of course, it's just like they get that. They're with that. They're, they're, they're aware that there are other parts of the story. They just want to know. Some folks are already, they're, they, they're, they're just getting an affirmation from what they know. Mm. You know, some folks are just exploring and kind of open like I am to being wrong. And like, let me hear about this other side that I might not be looking into. Uh, but then there's a percentage of people that's just grown for I know many people, they're afraid to, to express their voice. And I, many of our friends, they've sh they share with me. They got big platforms. They're like, Sean, what you're doing, I appreciate you. I love you for that. I'm just afraid of the pushback. You know, I'm afraid to speak up right now. And that's a whole other story of, you know, uh, congruency for me that bothers me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, right now, I think that, and th this is l last point in what you said earlier. You've gone up against this. You've spoken out on it more than anybody I've seen recently on, you know, th this the term that we use today is the bullying, mm. you know, just people just talking crazy to you, talking down on you like you experienced back when you were, you know, 14 years old. But that level gets heightened because it's not just in your high school auditorium anymore. It's not even relegated to your high school. Millions of people can say any kind of crazy thing to you and they don't even know who you are. And so I have this perspective, and I want it. To, for us to solve our most pressing problems, we have to have dialogue. Mm -hmm. I, I want that. Let's talk about it. But I will not allow you to disrespect me, right? So that, that's one thing. You, we can talk, but don't be disrespectful. I'm like Mutumbo with the block. Like, I'll, I'll eliminate you. you will, your voice will, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't have time for that, you know? And so I'm so grateful that you brought this up. Because I don't want people to mistake your kindness for weakness. I don't want people to mistake your willingness to talk and to figure things out for an open invitation for them to disrespect you. Mm -hmm. You know, I do this so much there. I think that it's, again, it's, it's what you allow. One of, the, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in my, my little 42 and a half years here on this earth is the power of a choice you that's your 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 biggest currency your you know it's priceless even the choice you have a choice to let people in or not let them in you have a choice to infiltrate yourself in 
whatever it is that you want or you have a choice not to. And I know a lot of people think right now, well, I don't have a choice because I have to do this. So I'm in my job. Yeah. If you're in your job right now and it's, it's what's paying the bills and you have to do it. Okay. What is, what are you doing in that specific job? That's really great. Like that you can say, I actually did this well. So at the end of the day, you're not just harping on, well, this is negative and oh my God, I don't like this. Well, do something really well so that when you finish the end of the day, you feel really good. But it's all up to you and how you decide what you want to do with what it is that's that's given to you or what you want to do that's presented and offered to you. And so if you really take that for a second and think, when was the last time that I made a choice to do something that I wanted to do? And when was the last time I, that I made a choice to do something that I didn't want to do? And compare those two things. When you made a choice to do something that you did want to do, you're probably like, oh, this was fruitful. This was incredible and amazing. Oh, my goodness. And then when you're like, I made a choice to do something that I didn't want to do, and I knew it wasn't going to fuel me, how much time was wasted? in your life, right? So start to learn how to really look at it and not be afraid to make the choice that's going to push you forward, to make the choice that's going to give you hope and desire and change and help you be able to really enhance and touch people's lives. I mean, for everyone listening right now, I mean, you, Sean, when he gives you these shows, he's coming with amazing facts. He chooses to give you the facts, knowing, like he, like you said, Sean, things bother you a little bit, but knowing you're going to get pushback, but you choose to do this because you want to educate people in a really great way. And so I ask people out there, what are the things right now that you are choosing to do that's going to elevate your life, elevate your confidence, elevate your success? Because these are the things you have to take into, and I always like to bring it back to your fitness journey. These are the things you have to bring back to your fitness journey, your nutrition, if you feel successful in making choices over here, you're going to feel more successful and confident in making choices in your fitness and your nutrition, what you're eating, and just the commitment to who you are. Everything, just everything, all energies fuse back together, believe it or not. Yeah. So I want to ask you specifically, man. Um, the human brain, we t even though the negativity might be a small percentage, mm -hmm which oftentimes it is, especially if you're living in integrity and you know, you're just kind of doing your homework and, and, and just being, being yourself. The negativity tends, it's tend to be a small percentage, but that percentage jumps out. It might be 5% of negative, uh, of negative reviews coming in. Mm -hmm. And the 95 is the 95% is loving what you're doing and is appreciative of that. Our, our brains were kind of hardwired to look for problems, which is part kind of how we evolved. Right. But we have the ability to supersede that. And so I want to ask you specifically, because I know a lot of folks feel that, like they want to have conversations with their family members. They want to speak out and share their perspective, share their voice. It might not be something controversial, but just share their th what they want to do with their lives and their gifts and talents on social media platforms and maybe doing videos, but they're afraid of the negativity. Mm. What can you advise folks to do or just recommend or just from your experience and how they can deal with the negativity and continue to kind of push through and do what f what they feel they need to do in their heart? Ah, uh, this is so great. Well, everyone, you know, we throw around the word, be authentic, be authentic. And, and, and what I like to tell people in the best way that they can be authentic to, you know, get rid of the word authentic because it is kind of white noise is who are you talking to? when you're on social media, who, who are you talking to? I was actually just having a conversation with Scott and I said, I look at social media like I'm talking to a bunch of friends that aren't in the same room. And he said, but you know, there's millions of people and you know, some people are just sitting in the rafters waiting to watch. I was like, but I'm still talking to my friends because the people that get me or the people that get you, that's all you gotta worry about. Not everybody's going to like you. So, you know, some people are waiting in the wings to say something negative. They're literally waiting there to say something negative. Well, we already know they exist. And like Sean just said, 95% of the time, our brains are wanting and focused on the things that are really great, right? So talk to the people you like and talk to the people that like you. Listen, 
social media, your podcast, even whatever, it's a revolving door. It's like a it's like a grocery store. Some people come in and they keep coming back. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to Whole Foods because they got this, that, and the third. But then, uh oh, Sprouts opens. You know, people go across the street to Sprouts. Does that mean that Whole Foods changes its brand to look like Sprouts? No. Whole Foods is like, that's cool. We got Amazon Prime. You can just walk out of here without even, you know, going to the cash register, right? Like, they just continue to evolve and do their thing. Down and out. They don't hate on Sprouts. They're like, cool. Even if you go to the cash register, a cashier to say, oh, they got that over at Sprouts. We don't got it here. Go, go ahead. Like, continue to live your best life. And so for you, just because maybe people don't like you or you have a hard time expressing yourself because of maybe people walking away, it doesn't mean you have to change who you are. You don't have to change your brand. Nike didn't get popular by changing a swoosh to like a hard check mark, right? Like it doesn't matter. I was actually just watching Wendy Williams. That's my thoughtless TV, right? And Fat Joe came on and he was like, I gotta pay, I gotta pay $80,000 Nikes. And I'm like, come all the way through. The only reason why he paid $80,000 for those Nikes is because they stay committed to the brand. Through their struggles and their strengths, through their good times and their bad times, they stay committed to the brand. Why do we show up to the Olympics every year? Because we know we're going to get like amazing competition and people are going to be putting in their blood, sweat and tears. They didn't change the Olympics to say, like, we're only going to give medals to the last three losers, right? Like, no matter what, whether somebody comes and goes, like stay committed. To not, I don't want to use the word brand because I, I don't, I, this is not about your business. This is about the brand of you. This is you. Stay committed to who you are. You're not perfect. Neither am I. You know, we say some stuff. I say some stuff that's off the wall sometimes. I'm like, oh, I can't believe I said that. But you know what? I embrace the mistake and I just keep it moving. So, I say all that to say, you know, if you're Whole Foods, continue to be Whole Foods. People will come in, just give them a good experience while they're there. And if they go across the street to Sprouts, say, good luck, and I hope you stay healthy. Boom. Listen, brother, I can't let you go without uh, directing people to the thing that you've created. Uh, you talked about this earlier, directing folks back to themselves because no one else can do the push-ups for you. Mm. No one else unless you, you know, on that, like some kind of baby role play, nobody else is feeding you, you know, <laughs> um, um, you know, unless you, unless that's happening, you're, you're doing these things for yourself. You're making these choices yourself every day. You're choosing to think the thoughts that you're thinking. You're choosing to take the actions that you're taking. Yes. And it's a both and world. Mm. The other part is the community mm. and what you've created to help to remind people of their power, remind people of their, their, their internal fitness for them to make the decisions that feel good to them. How important is community right now? Because truly, man, on a, on a very, very deep level, community's been shattered for many people. Yeah. And they've tiptoed around in some online stuff, but it's more, it's just so much drama out there. How important is it right now to get tapped into an empowering community and also let folks know what you've done and created for that? And even with your podcast, same thing, you know, direct people to that because it's always just such good reminders for me and the people that I care about. You are a continued source of inspiration on how important community is. Thank you. Um... It's a really great question because community is super huge to me. Growing up an athlete, but simultaneously growing up while feeling alone by hiding who I was, I felt I rem there was a time when I was a kid and I would hide in my closet and my best friend was my my buddy doll because I didn't have anyone to talk to. And so now having put my stamp down in the fitness industry, I realized that, okay, I love, like I said before, I love that people are putting like major focus on having a great physique. But for me, it's about the mental space. And the, and one of the things that really enhances your mentality is when you have a group of people that's there to lift you up. So I have this group online called The Safe Space. And it is has been, in the last couple of years, I call it the most positive space online because 
you don't get the negativity in there. It's people know that they're directed to come in there to really uplift and build themselves. When I pledged a fraternity, we were all about uplifting humanity and community service. And so this group is really for people who are maybe struggling or maybe they want to help or maybe they're in a good place and they just need a place to really communicate with people at the best level. So, Sean, you actually gave me a really great idea from reading your book. I know a lot of people may not have gotten your book yet. But for people who are, who are reading, hey, when this comes out, when this comes out, uh, the book isn't out yet. It's coming out next week. Okay. So you were one of the first five people that yeah. I gave the book to. Well, you gave me the best idea for 2021 because I told my safe space I was like, we're going to have once a month, we're going to have Wednesday night dinners because when in your book you talk about when you eat together, you're more apt to eat healthy. And so that's one of the things that we're going to do. And we're going to have a great conversation. So that's just one of the things we do in our group, the, the group called The Safe Space. It's, it's an amazing, amazing group. Um, these people are just incredible. And I can go anywhere in the country and put on any, an event. And it might only be 20 people in that area there, but it's always like a family reunion. So that's really, really great. Also, in that group, they get to listen into when I record my podcast live. So please go listen to Trust and Believe. It's been an amazing journey. And again, I got to give Sean props because coming from a fitness background and, you know, I have hundreds of thousands of people that work out with me on a daily or monthly basis, but getting into the podcast space was really interesting because it was talking without the exercise. And so now the podcast has just been become this really great engine of people that also are able to conversate around the topics of the personal things that I go through, as well as the guests that I bring on and people get to learn from. So it's really great. And last but not least, I'm so excited because I'm building a new website and I'm enhancing my community to something called the Unity Community, because I realized that going through 2020, it's not just about people feeling safe. It's also about people feeling unified. You know, we don't talk about what side of the political aisle you're on. We don't care if you're gay, straight. We don't care if you, you know, you're 60 or 18. We want to unify people in the best way possible and learn from each other and always feel, have a way to feel and be supported. And so that's what I'm doing. So hopefully you can join the safe space so you can definitely go listen to Trust and Believe. It's always a really good time. And uh, sometimes I'm hype and sometimes I'm not. And sometimes I cry and sometimes I curse. But hey, I keep it real 100 all the time. <laughs> Most definitely. Yes, you do, man. And I appreciate you for that. And listen, we'll put all the links to everything in the show notes, of course. Definitely check out Trust and Believe uh, podcast where you're listening to this podcast. You can find Shanti there. Just stay infused. Get that Get that drip, you know, get that infusion, that that IV drip of Sean T. It's oh, definitely good for you right now. Thank you. I actually get it. I have my, my for everyone out there, that's the last thing I'll say to enhance your health. That's going to be even more important than the fitness routine you put yourself through in 2021 is active recovery days. I've gotten my stem cell therapy. I've started lymphatic drainage. I've started IV therapy, compression therapy hyperbaric chamber. Maybe we talk about that after a year. I've been through all of these recovery things, but recover your body, like the stretching and all the recovery is just as important as the pounding and lifting you put it through. That's right. And of course, the food that you eat and eating with you, of course, That's is just right. always a great time. Can you, having you here, man, can you let everybody know what they have to look forward to in Eat Smarter? Oh, man. Okay, so for those of you who are about to read this book, it is... All right, so let me just... I got to set the scene for you, right? So Sean was like, how do you want me to send you the book? I was like, can you send it, you know, on a computer? And I was like, okay, I love Sean, so I'm obviously going to read the book, and he's super smart. So of course I'm going to sit down and read the book. I was like, I'm going to read it 20 minutes a day. Let me tell you something. I was late getting home. I, I had rented an Airbnb. I was in Seattle. I sat down to read the book, and I just could not stop. But these are the reasons why I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop, number one, because I felt like I was learning something on every page, enhancing the foundation of health that I already know and getting deeper into the woods. But it, it's written in a way that everyone can understand. In addition to that, I was laughing. Now, I, get, I got to hang out with Sean in person. I don't know about all of you, but if you've never gotten to hang out with Sean in person, this book is literally 
his humor and how he is. But the thing that was most powerful and most impactful is that day that I went home. I think I sat down and read for two and a half hours. That day when I went home, I sat down while we were making dinner and I was just rattling off all of these new things that I learned and things that I'm actually applying to my meals even today. And it's less about applying the meals to eat chicken or eat broccoli. And it's like, for what's in the chicken? What's in the broccoli? How's it breaking down in your body? Oh, and then I'm thinking of a funny thing that Sean says. So this is not a book like, oh, I'm going to take notes and just figure out what I'm going to eat. You're going to feel like you went to one of the easiest college courses on nutrition in your life, and you will probably read it again. And that is coming from the heart, because if I didn't like it, I would tell y'all that too. But let me tell you something. Sean was in it. He's in it, y'all. You guys are going to have such a great time reading this book. Powerful, brother. I love you, man. And love you thank too, you so man. much for being being the light that you are. And pl- I, I don't even have to say this, but please don't stop. Please don't stop putting the gas pedal down and being 100 and showing everybody, you know, what it's like to be human, you know, at the end of the day. You know, you've got such an incredible dynamic story and your heart is as big as the room. And, you know, right now, I think for, for many folks, You're just a reminder of our greatness. You remind us of how much potential we have to see all the videos. You know, of course, I I would hope everybody's following you on Instagram, but people who are dancing along with you (laughs) and just coming out of like, you could see the joy. We need that right now, man. I'm just so, I'm grateful for you. And this is your journey. And you are reminding us of our journeys and can't wait to see what you do next, man. I love you too, man. Thank you everyone for listening and always trust and believe in who you are. Hey, if you like this video, make sure to check out this video right here to optimize your health starting today. And also make sure to click below to get a free gift. I choose this, but it needs modification. Like, I love it, but it needs modification because I'm tolerating some things in this experience that I would be happier if I didn't tolerate. Mm. 